Hi everyone. Today we are going to talk about the key terms you need to negotiate with Chinese supplier when import from China. Specifically, we are going to explore the key terms you need to negotiate with your chosen supplier, how to retain some leverage over them and control your project, and how and why the quality standard and samples are absolutely crucial for ensuring you get the products you expect from your supplier once they start production. Okay. First, let's take a look at why is it important to be organized and avoid looking too inexperienced when negotiating terms with a new supplier. Don't make it too obvious that you are green. So do the research about your product category before contacting potential suppliers. Otherwise, you risk being scammed or scaring away great suppliers, who either may reject working with you. All give your orders very low priority compared to those from better established customers due to concerns over the level of business you can give them. So, what terms do you need to negotiate? The first one is the price of the goods. This is the key term to negotiate, and this impacts what you sell at. The second term is lead time. When will the supplier be busiest? This should influence when you place your order in order to receive it on time, such as before Christmas. More rounds of samples will delay you settling on a final PP sample. Bear in mind that sea shipping may take nine weeks instead of the five it used to now, so add some padding of extra lead time to account for these delays. The third one is inco terms. FOB gives you control over the shipping and allows you to select your own freight forwarder or 3PL. Be aware of CIF. It may sound tempting to get free delivery these days, especially late 2021, but you may be at risk of a forwarder charging you exorbitant local fees for unloading, etc. The next one is IP protection. If you have a unique product or one with custom functionality, you need to stop the supplier from being able to sell it to others. So, signing an NNN agreement and product development or manufacturing agreement with the supplier is a helpful way to protect your IP. Next one is transparency over the supply chain and access to the manufacturing site. Keeping your supply chain information from you helps suppliers lock you in, as it's harder to switch to a new supplier if you have to redevelop everything, and it also obscures the true costs of everything from you, so you don't know their margin. To take control, you may use a manufacturing agreement to specify that no one unauthorized subcontracting is allowed. For example. Access to the site means that you will be able to send inspectors at any time. Buyers placing larger volume orders will have more luck in negotiating this. The next term you want to negotiate is the quality standards. Give the supplier clarity over your quality standard by negotiating what is and is not acceptable with them. Such as the size of a dot that can be allowed in ceramic products. This should also include packaging, as the supplier needs to be in agreement with you over what packaging is appropriate and acceptable to protect your products. The last term is payment terms. How are you doing to pay and when? TT payments are commonly requested by suppliers. Inexperienced or overconfident buyers may pay 100% in advance, but this is a terrible idea. Negotiate a 30% or lower advance payment. For air shipment, you will need to pay in full before the plane departs, but make sure you do a final inspection before the goods are shipped. For sea shipment, usually buyers should pay the supplier after shipment. Which means once the buyer provides shipping documentation, 
Although with the difficult state of shipping at the time of this video, many suppliers insist to be paid in full before the goods are shipped because there are often delays and the goods sit in port for some time, affecting their cash flow a lot. Next, we're gonna talk about how to keep leverage over suppliers. You have legal and non-legal tools to keep leverage over your suppliers. Legal tools include a fully enforceable manufacturing contract or agreement that will be in Chinese. It is relatively easy to scare a Chinese supplier who's in breach of their contract by getting a local lawyer to send them a letter on official letterhead. Reasonable Chinese suppliers are used to signing a contract. If they resist a reasonable contract, it's a red flag. And you also want to know what payment tools do we have to keep leverage. As long as you owe money to the supplier, you have some level of control over them. Try to retain a substantial amount, maybe 10 to 15% in your hands until you're sure everything is okay. Otherwise, less honest suppliers could play games, especially if you don't have an agreement in place. For example, when shipping FOB, you may choose to pay the final 10% after shipping upon receipt of the bill of lading. If you pay in full before goods are shipped and there are issues with the products once they arrive, getting retribution may be incredibly hard. Even if the supplier agrees to produce more, perhaps at a discount to account for the initial defectives, how long will it take for them to arrive and can you trust that they will be okay this time? Next, keeping leverage over your tooling. If you are manufacturing a custom product and have invested in tooling for that, your contract should state that you own the mold and should contain the option for you to pull it out from the supplier at any time under pain of litigation if it is not allowed by them. If not, some suppliers may attempt to retain the tooling in order to keep leverage over you as they know manufacturing new tooling is expensive and time-consuming and they are also able to produce your product and sell it in competition to you if they are particularly unscrupulous. Next, let's talk about paying by letter of credit. Small buyers cannot use this, but payment by letter of credit may be possible for others over $50,000. An advantage is that no advance payment needs to be sent to the supplier. They are becoming less common, but some suppliers will accept them if they can accept that it's not great for their cash flow. The last point you want to know is that in what ways should you describe what you are expecting to receive from your supplier. Your quality standard shows your requirements, what you want to receive, and what is not acceptable. Approved samples are also important, especially in textiles and apparel. For electromechanical products, you need to consider functionality, safety, and aesthetics and define the testing required. It's important to document everything to avoid unpleasant surprises. For packaging, this also applies. The supplier needs detailed photos and information about the packaging materials, colors, and design, especially if it's retail packaging as this is part of the product. When you have pre-production prototypes, check them for defects and document what is and is not acceptable with photographs, such as this blemish size is not acceptable. Everything should be in a master document, not sent separately in emails, WeChat messages, etc. This makes it harder for inspectors to check the quality during production, as it's hard to collect the information they require about your quality standard if it has not been collected neatly. If the buyer doesn't specify clearly what quality is expected of the supplier, 
Quality issues are on you as well as the manufacturer, especially their iOS 9001 certified as they should be collecting requirements from the customer. Okay, that's all we have for today. Thank you for watching this video and we will see you in our next one.